So peeps, another day and another cheeky little component video for you beautiful people out there. So what we're going to be going over now is a temperature transmitter that you might see in a control panel or in a kitten enclosure. And this is the hockey puck style. So what we're going to be going over is what they do, how they do it, and how you test it and where you'd see it. So what we've got coming up is we've got the transmitter itself in its natural environment and it's inside our chiller. So we've got it in this enclosure. You can see this big grey cutting board coming in. That's the Moe core coming from the control panel. And then it goes into this terminal block. And then you've got the two cables going out to the transmitter. Now this is a two wire powered loop. So it's also, it's a 24 volt feed, but it's feeding back the four to 20 milliamps. As you can see going back on the yellow and purple cable. So as you can see, the other cable going into it, that's a PT100 with a red and white cables. You can do thermal couples into these, but you've got to configure them a little slightly different. So as you can see, following the red cable up, that's going to be taking the, uh, that's up to the PT100, and that's taking the ambient temperature of the chiller. So why would we use these transmitters? So it isolates the um, components from having to do an, an extensive run if you to get a faulty PT100 or thermocouple. It also amplifies and filters out any noise that could be on a long run if that cable's going right back to another control panel. And it does away with having to have extent, expensive extension cables, especially if you've got a thermocouple. Some of them um, similar metals can be quite expensive. And also the real main magic about these is they can take multiple different style of input signals and convert them into outputs of most PLC or control units can take. Why we got asked configured it's taking the resistance value of the P2100 and then it's converting that into a millivolt signal. And as you can see here, it's giving us an ambient temperature of about 23 degrees. So the way this is wired up, we've got the power loop coming in, terminal one and two, and then the feedback going back was millivolts and then three, four, five. That'd be the P2100 terminals with your red and white cables. And we're going on to our testing them. So in true Blue Peter style, here's one I prepared earlier. So what I'm doing is showing how you to test it. We've configured it for a P2100. So I've got a 100 ohm resistor across the P2100 terminals. Because as we all know, P2100's starting value at zero degrees is 100 ohms. So I've got my feed coming out at 24 volts DC. That's coming out in the brown cable. So I've got it, my multimeter in series before the transmitter and then we're testing on milliamps. Now as you can see, this isn't bang on four milliamps. This would need calibrating, but it's close enough at the moment. So it's going through my multimeter to the transmitter and back on the feed. So we can show what this pulling at the milliamps. Why would we use milliamps? Because you could use zero to 10 volts, but on a long run, voltage could have a volt drop. Where with your amps and milliamps, wherever you test it, you're gonna have a constant reading. So with that 100 ohm resistor in there, and it being near on four milliamps on our HMI, it would show zero degrees. So that's a really handy tip. If you keep a couple of 100 ohms resistors in your box, stick it in your, if you wanted to make sure that your feedback is true. And as you can see on my HMI here, it's showing zero degrees. So I've got PT100 now wired in, just to show you what it looks like and show you with the milliamps going up and down. So this milliamps at the moment will be showing our ambient temperature. Now as most by the readout was the same as what was in the chiller, about 22 degrees. So as you can see, we've got a three wire wired in. This is the most common you might well see in the fact in a like factory environment or out in the field. You do get two wire, but there's too much error in that. Three wire, what that does in the four wire, it takes the resistant value out of the cable itself and just leaves you with a probe resistance. So I'm gonna put it on a known heat source just so you can see the milliamps going up and down. So with the working ranges of most temperature sensors, the milliamps is gonna work out. So if you think, four milliamps would be zero degrees. And if it went up to about 300 degrees of the sensor, that'd be your 20 milliamps. I've done testing P2100s before, but I'll do a quick recap. If you've got a good transmitter and you've got the feedback you want, what you want to do is disconnect the P2100, put it in a good known temperature source, and then disconnect the terminals. And on your multimeter on ohms, you want to go red to red, you want as close to zero ohms as you can, and then white to red, you want your readout of your temperature, and then you check your charts. Now, if you're still watching this, you're alleged approved.